was a boy, I always used to dream of appearing at the Oval before a stand-up-only <laughs> crowd. It's finally happened. It's not quite how I imagined it, but uh, still very exciting. Uh, I, now, as you've gathered, uh, I'm not a scientist. I've certainly done nothing to contribute to the, uh, the field of human knowledge like the previous speaker, uh, I regret to say. Uh, and further, yes, indeed, I am a journalist. I can confirm, I can confirm that indeed uh, reporters never write their own headlines. A little, known, a little known finding. So you can always trust what I write. You can't necessarily trust uh, what goes uh, in the headline. Now, I became an expert to some extent in the, uh, in the subjects uh, that we're discussing today uh, in, a, in an unintentional way, which was by suffering quite a number of the different ailments that uh, CORE is researching. Um, it was a very uh, interesting experience also because I was actually first taken ill uh, in the US, uh, in New York, and I've had extensive experience of being treated both in the US uh, and in the UK. And uh, Actually, the similarities between those two very different health systems, which are the subject of such unbelievable uh, political fire and animosity in the US at the moment. The similarities are much greater than the differences. Now, what I'm going to, what I'm proposing to do is just to tell you my war story for a few minutes, then tell you some of the lessons I've derived from being uh, a patient and, a, and an awkward case for the last three years or so, uh, and then we'll take some questions. Now, the first thing to say about uh, pancre pancreatitis, or the problem that I had with my pancreas, is that they, they are, the problems are both sudden and shocking. No doctor had ever mentioned the word pancreas to me at all until a day in May uh, 2010, when I woke up uh, one morning finding it quite, found it surprisingly difficult to do up my trousers, which I'd only bought about two weeks before. And I ended up leaving one button open as I went into work. Um, thinking this was a little strange. I was on duty on a Sunday, um, so I was going in, uh, into a very quiet office. Uh, my back was killing me, uh, which I was to discover is a giveaway symptom of problems with your pancreas. Who knew? I certainly didn't. Uh, by the time I get to the office, I'm already feeling very strange indeed. I've got a rushing noise in my ears. I'm feeling somewhat sick. Uh, but I actually get through the day. I write a column about, uh, about Greece's attempt to get a bailout from the Eurozone that day. That was a... Uh, didn't read that badly, oddly enough, in the, in the final analysis. By lunchtime, I'm really feeling very strange, not sure what I should be doing. Uh, say, calm down, John. Go for a swim, because uh, that'll make you feel better. That swim, I gather, probably saved my life. Uh, so I, we had a swimming pool a couple of blocks away from the office. So I went for my swim. I always like doing backstroke. Uh, and what happens when your pancreas is really expanded is that it starts to push onto the other organs and compact them in. If you're sitting hunched over a computer and a phone, then your back is bending out. You're creating a little bit of extra space for the pancreas to get big. You're minimizing the symptoms. If you get into a pool and start going like this, you're pushing your expanded pancreas up against the other organs in your body. So by the end of my second length swimming, I suddenly felt this appalling pain right here on the left side, which radiated right the way down the left arm. Uh, the attendant could see I was in difficulties, helped pull me out of the pool, and then I was violently sick uh, on the edge of the pool. So he said, make yourself decent as quickly as possible. I'm going to call you a cab. There's, there was a hospital, you know, two minutes drive away. Uh, obviously, everybody in this room would have assumed in the same situation as I did that I was having a heart attack. Um, when I got to the emergency room, they assumed I was having a heart attack. It was exactly like ER, all these different things being put on me, desperately looking at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, at things going blip on a screen. Uh, after half an hour, they've worked out that my heart is performing completely normally. Interest begins to dissipate. Somebody comes along to get all the details of my insurance. This is, this is America. Um, 
Uh, and uh, they tell me, well, it looks, uh, they, it looks as though this is just a really nasty stomach flu, but we're going to keep you under observation because they, they could see that something seemed a bit odd. Um, I, called my, uh, I called my wife. Um, we had recently had our third kid at the time. Um, I called, called my wife and told her, well, the, the good news is I haven't had a heart attack, and the bad news is that I'm in the ER. Um, um, uh, and told her it, it, it looks as though I just had uh, tummy flu, so she ordered to come in. While my wife was on her way, they got the results of the blood test back. Now, one of the main ways you, do, well, the main way you can see whether your pancreas is, is misbehaving is by taking a look at the enzymes it secretes into the, the blood. Uh, in this country, it tends to be amylase. In the US, they look at lipase. I gather there aren't many great differences between, between the two. Uh, a normal healthy adult would have a lipase level of between 150 and 300. I had a lipase level of 96,000. This therefore left them with total confidence that, you know, that I had a pancreatic problem. The main cause of pancreatitis, uh, statistically, is alcoholism. So they asked me if I drank a lot. Uh, and I replied, well, these days, I scarcely drink anything at all, which is actually true. I'd steadily lost the taste for alcohol in the years before, which might, have been, might well have been a sign that my pancreas was, was playing up. They interpreted that as a tacit admission that I used to drink like a fish. <laughs> so when my wife finally arrives, thinking she's going to pick me up because I'm gonna, feeling really fragile after, with a really bad dose of the, the, the stomach flu, the first question they ask you is, when did your husband stop being a heavy drinker? They're so, so nice, American nurses. Um, she wishes she'd replied just as soon as he'd stopped beating me. You know. um, so, um, anyway, we couldn't tell whether it was alcohol. They, they, um, you know, I, I actually cannot remember quite a lot of what happened in the last few hours. I was, the, the following few hours, I was delirious. Um, I gather my life really was in, in danger. If, if I had been about four or five hours later, which I probably would have been if I hadn't gone for that swim, I might well not have got attention until it was too late. Um, so one moral, if you, if you feel, like, feel like you need to have a swim, perhaps you, perhaps you should follow that, uh, that instinct. Now, uh, there are various causes for, for pancreatitis. I spent two weeks in hospital. I was you know, on nil by mouth for, for over a week. Uh, lots and lots of morphine. It's, it's, um, I, you know, who knows how you measure pain? I'm told it's about as painful a condition as it's possible for men to have. Uh, I've witnessed childbirth. I'm confident it ain't as bad as that, but it, it hurts. Um, there are various causes that can, that can uh, cause a, a pancreas to, to, to go like that. The main one, other than alcohol, is, uh, is gallstones. Uh, stuff is supposed to flow out of the pancreas. Nothing is supposed to flow into it. So if the gall, gallbladder, which I mean, the core at one point had a, had a diagram of the gut, the, 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 the gallbladder is right there next to the, the pancreas. If, if gallstones pass, try to pass into the pancreas, they will create problems for the pancreas. So I had a series of tests where they, they looked for, for gallstones, just couldn't find them. Uh, and you know, the doctors didn't believe the first test and went and asked to have another look for gallstones and so on. They, uh, after the ultrasound didn't find them, I had an MRI looking for them. The null hypothesis remained that, the, that they thought this was probably, um, probably just microscopic gallstones. Um, as they weren't sure about it, and as it was always possible it had been caused by alcohol, that I, that I had, I'd never been a heavy drinker, but I had drunk socially. It was possible that I had a strange metabolism. They didn't think in the States that on, the law, on, the, on balance of probabilities it was justified to take out my... Uh, gallbladder. They did charmingly tell me, this was on the eve of when I was moving back to, to the UK, they did charmingly tell me that they thought the most likely explanation was that I was in the very early stages of pancreatic cancer. Uh, so please go and, uh, please go and have a, a test for pancreatic cancer, which I did. But basically the problem was, uh, and this is one of the things that's, that's little understood, there was, undergo there was underlying damage, the result that it was just became an extremely debilitating illness. I would get minor symptoms of pancreatitis, minor spikes in lipase counts. Uh, I came, I moved to London, basically repeated the same exercise. Uh, we 
looked, we made yet more hunts for gallstones, failed to find them. Um, at one point, um, I talked to a doctor who asked about these pancreatic enzymes I'd been taking and suggested I should take more and take them precisely at meals that I hadn't been taking my enzymes at the right times. Uh, and eventually, on, a, on my GP's advice, I actually uh, quit the job I had moved back to London to do. He said that you're obviously not capable of working at this level. For anybody who does read the Financial Times, I edited the Lex column for, for a while and had to give that up. So everything comes to a head uh, a year ago when I have a real tummy flu this time, given to me by, by my son. You know, if, you want to get yourself a, if you want to get yourself an infectious disease, send your child to a nursery. It's <laughs> guaranteed. It's this, much the same thing as holding them upside down in a vat of uh, petri dish full of germs. Um, so I, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, a tummy bug of the kind that we will all recognize. Uh, and three days later, I went into the, the office and at least this time, it's much easier once you know the symptoms. I began to feel this aching pain in the lower end of my back. And then when I started bending backwards and forwards, I realized I could make it different and that my tummy was hurting. So I went to Guy's, uh, which is just around the corner from where I work, discovered to my great interest that Guy's Hospital doesn't have an emergency department anymore. Um, so uh, I spoke to the duty GP there who said, uh, I'll help you with triage, you've got to go to St. Thomas's. Uh, went to St. Thomas's. Um, and they did the blood test. This time in, in the UK, they test for amylase. You're supposed to have an amylase level of between 35 and 100, and mine was just over 1,000. So I stayed in. They had another look for st stones in the gallbladder. At this point, because I'd been teetotal for three years, it was obvious that it couldn't possibly be a reaction to alcohol. Uh, so their best guess was that it must be a problem in the gallbladder. We made another two unavailing attempts to find stones in the gallbladder. Uh, still couldn't, and the surgeon said, on balance of probabilities, I'm inclined to take it out anyway. I phoned my American specialist uh, uh, because I wanted a second opinion. Uh, you know, taking out an organ from your body that nobody can see anything wrong with is a, is a slightly drastic step that I need some guidance on. She said, well, I doubt it is your gallbladder, but if, the, if, if it isn't your gallbladder, it's something else, and you ever did get a gallstone, then that could be a really terrifying problem for you, so I would take it out anyway. So I had it out. It's a remarkable keyhole surgery procedure. I mean, the, 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 my scar is maybe half a centimeter wide, if that. It's just amazing how you can pull this thing out. Uh, and then uh, what happened was that everything got very much worse, something which neither the British nor the American doctors had told me was a, a, a problem to worry about. So I went to the ER various times with excruciating pain and lots of other gut symptoms that even in this gathering I'm a little squeamish to talk about. Uh, so I then went and saw a gastroenterologist um, who mentioned for the first time uh, that it was the, uh, it sounded like a sphincter of Oddi problem. Uh, now, this is the first time in two and a half years of being a serious pancreatic patient that anybody had mentioned what the sphincter of Oddi is. Uh, scientists in the room can correct me. As I understand it, it's this little sphincter at the end of the pancreas which controls the secretion of uh, fluids from the pancreas out into the, the gallbladder, the pancreatic duct, and the bile duct. It's a sort of meeting point in the uh, digestive system. Um, and if you have a problem with the way that sphincter is working, then removing the gallbladder will make things worse. It's one of the few places where removing a gallbladder will actually cause a problem for you, as, as I understand the science. So we had a, they gave me a test where you, in, you are injected with something called secretin, which makes your pancreas secrete more. Uh, and it's a very beautiful thing. You, you, you do an MRI first where you look at the pancreas, and it's like a leaf. It's like this with a, with a, with a, with a duct down the middle and then little leaves off the side, and after they put the secretin in, every, all the ducts suddenly became much wider, much clearer, which showed that there was a, a blockage at the neck of the pancreas. So on that basis, they uh, decided they were going to give, give me what I believe, I seem to remember was called an ERCG, some, some set of initials like that. ECGP, have I got it? Something like that. Um, uh, where I was warned this had been something the Americans had considered doing, but the problem is that it has an extremely high risk of giving you pancreatitis, and they didn't have good enough evidence, they felt, to go ahead and doing it, to go ahead and do it. Um, 
whether there would have been any point giving me the, the test with, with uh, secretin is similarly very dubious. It's a very rare form of uh, cause for problems of the pancreas. It's not something that you would do first, either at, either at the NHS or, the, uh, or an American insurance company would have had problems doing that. So I have this remarkable procedure, which technically isn't even surgery, as I understand it, where a tube comes in through your mouth, they cut through, they put in a wire, then they cut through the sphincter, which is two millimeters wide, and insert a, a, a stent, which is two millimeters wide. Um, which is quite extraordinary that this is possible. Uh, and I wake up, feel much better, actually have a full meal that evening, and then the next day uh, I feel now very familiar pain in the lower back and they test my amylase and it's 3,600 so I have a, a longer stay in hospital to look forward to. After this though, ev everything does feel a lot better but the symptoms as we, uh, as we squeamishly call them in uh, British parlance continue. Um, so I then discovered that one of the big problems was that there was actually more than one thing going on. Um, I, had a, I had a test, I believe this was called a CCAT scan, uh, which found that I had a delightfully named thing called bile salt malabsorption, which had probably been something I'd had all along. And the cure for this is something which uh, the uh, doctors and my kids all describe as gunk. It's cholestyramine, you, you mix it up, it's a resin which makes everything stick to everything else. It doesn't just do that inside your body, if you, it sticks to things. So you, you, take, you take this three or four times a day with meals, it keeps everything stuck together as it goes through your gut. Uh, and suddenly uh, everybody was commenting on how I was looking better than I had looked in five or six years. The color returned to my face. Uh, I also discovered that I suddenly started putting on a lot of weight. I had been in the habit during all these years when I wasn't, wasn't keeping anything down of just snarfing down carbs like there was no tomorrow to keep giving me energy and knowing that I wasn't going to put on any weight given the problems with my digestion. And I think I put on 10 pounds in a month after I started putting on cholestyramine. Uh, so uh, we now are at a position where uh, suddenly, uh, three and a half years later, uh, but after really rather a lot of pain and um, all kinds of problems, I am feeling fine. What are the lessons I would draw from this? Uh, first of all, the science of the pancreas is very limited. It's in its infancy, uh, probably not unlike that of many other, uh, many other parts of the body, but a number of the different specialists I've spoken to on both sides of the Atlantic have been very frank about how the, uh, the, 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 uh, the science of this, this part of the body is, is at an early stage. That's part of the reason why pancreatic cancer is the most dangerous form of cancer is because they haven't worked out how to spot it until it's already uh, at a stage where there's nothing much to be done to, uh, to thwart it. That was part of why the Americans were interested in looking for early signs of it. Uh, another thing is that although uh, the, it turns out there probably was a procedure that could have made me feel that could have solved the problem three years earlier than it did, everybody actually did the right thing. Um, according to the uh, According to uh, specialists on both sides of the Atlantic, the uh, precise cause for my pancreatitis accounts for about 0.2% of all cases. It's not something you would look for the first sign. Everybody did the right thing on balance of probabilities, looking at, to see if it was alcohol taking out the gallbladder and so on. Um, a third point I'd like to make is that, um, particularly spending a lot of time in the states where they are killing themselves over how to organize Health, their health system. There's surprisingly little difference between the US and the UK. I've, I, I've talked through the U US specialist. Basically, the British, when I arrived here, did exa repeated exactly the steps the Americans had taken. And I talked to my American specialist after all of these things had happened, and basically uh, the same thing, the same complicated series of steps would have happened on either side of the Atlantic, whether it was the NHS or an insurance company paying for it. I will say that there is one area where I, I do think the, uh, the, the NHS comes out looking rather good, is that the NHS, to a much greater extent, does treat the person. Uh, the specialists I talked to in the States, I, I, I moved back to Britain only three or four months after, after being taken ill, said, yes, you can go. You can go home. You, you're not, you don't have critical pancreatitis anymore. 
Uh, and I arrived back and signed on with the GP, and the GP wanted to see me straight away and said, what on earth are you doing? How could they possibly have allowed you to do a transatlantic move with three kids when you're in this condition? Uh, and he was right. That was a treatment of the condition, of the person, rather than of the uh, condition. The other thing I will say is that the, the nursing care is better here than in the States. St. Thomas's nurses really are very empowered in a way that uh, uh, nurses even in the best teaching hospitals in New York aren't. The fourth point I'd like to make, um, and this, even though I am actually a journalist, echoes what you've heard already, is that you do need to beware of Google and Wikipedia. Now, it was, it was fun, it was fun to find out, um, you know, Odie, who the sphincter of Odie was named after, turns out to have been a very raffish 19th century um, Italian physician who got himself uh, addicted to opium and ended up dying in the Belgian Congo. That's quite interesting stuff to know about. When I looked up uh, the, uh, the precise procedure I was going to have, uh, I found out on Wikipedia that the rate of deaths within a week of having this procedure was 75%. Uh, and then I read on further and saw that the average age of people having it was something like 78, and it's basically something you only do to people in the very final stages of pancreatic cancer in a bid to alleviate their symptoms. It's highly unusual to do it on somebody like me. This was not a relevant piece of information for me, but uh, I would have been better off not knowing it. Um, Another point I'd like to make is that you need to beware of Occam's razor, that if there's a complicated explanation, a simple one, it'll be the simple one. Uh, I can remember one, one of the surgeons said, well, if, if you, um, when we were debating whether to take the gallbladder out, was if you hear, if you hear hoofbeats in, in Central Park, New York, don't think zebras, think horses. As the argument was, if the odds are about 80% that this is a problem with your gallbladder, take out the gallbladder. Um, it's not always that simple. And there's a particular problem when there's, um, when there's more than one thing going on. Uh, no one diagnosis explained all the things that were a problem with, because there were actually two problems. There was a plumbing problem with my pancreas, and there was a problem with the absorption of my gut. I would also say that people need to take much more notice of their symptoms. I had had, in retrospect, although no doctor ever mentioned it to me, uh, and I can't really blame them because I never really put all the relevant symptoms together in one place for somebody, you could tell that this was coming. My, you know, I was more prone to diarrhea as time went by. I was getting more and more pain in the lower back, uh, which I was seeing uh, chiropractors about and, and so on. Um, uh, I was probably actually making things worse for myself by taking quite strong anti-inflammatories in an attempt to deal with the pain in my, pain in my back. You do need to... Uh, try to put all the symptoms together and mention everything, no matter how small. Uh, another point I'd like to make is that there is a very big gap between specialists and those who do more general care. And what I'm thinking of here in particular is the gap between specialists and nutritionists. Uh, somebody who knows how to re-engineer the, 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 uh, the, uh, you know, knows the intimate architecture of your guts, knows how to re-engineer it in surgery isn't necessarily somebody who, who can give you the best guidance on uh, how to diet, what kind of diets you're really going to be able to live with, what kind of diets you're not going to be able to live with. I spoke to nutritionists who were very good, but who simply weren't equal to, weren't prepared to chance their arm when dealing with quite such a serious and unusual case as I had. So, for example, I had directly opposite guidance more than once. One was, this, this is a problem with your pan pancreas has with dealing with any kind of oil. Don't even have salmon oil. Don't even have oils that are good for you. And I had other guidance. Take as much salmon oil as, you know, take three omega-3s every morning. Um, it's a very difficult, it's difficult to see why anybody ever would develop the kind of expertise to really understand the science of the pancreas and also, learn, given, given the financial incentives out there, and also um, learn how to uh, guide people in what diets can work and what diets can't work cut out dairy, which it turns out was a good thing to do. I'd been eating yogurt like there was no tomorrow because I'd previously been told that was one of the things I could eat. And I started taking far more uh, of these uh, pancreatic enzyme pills, which turned out to be completely irrelevant. Um, but they probably did contribute to my getting a stomach ulcer. I forgot to mention that. I had a stomach ulcer between, between the two attacks. Um, it's quite possible that that was uh, exacerbated by my taking too much of the Creon tablets. So 
it's it, be gentle on on doctors because you because there is no chance to do a controlled experiment. I changed too many things at once with the result that you couldn't tell what was helping and what was hindering. Uh, and finally, given what we what we've heard earlier, this is uh, gut illnesses are a Cinderella illness in many ways, and they shouldn't be. People would uh, hear that people would hear that I had a problem with the pancreas. Go, oh my God, pancreatic cancer. No, and then tend to lose interest. Um, I, I think there are reasons for this. Uh, you know, it's tr plenty of gut illnesses can kill. I actually have a cousin with very serious Crohn's disease who came very close to losing his life more than once and has had a colostomy bag since he was in his mid-20s. I mean, these, these things can, can kill people and they can be extremely debilitating even when they're not actually killing you. Now, there are reasons why we don't, why they're not talked about so much. There's, I think, a natural squeamishness, and that's not just British, although it's perhaps particularly bad in Britain, about talking about, uh, uh, about symptoms. I mentioned the word uh, diarrhea. This is only the second time I've mentioned that word in this talk. I, if, I, if there was a little less natural squeamishness about gut symptoms, I would have mentioned that word very, very, very much more often, because I've become very, uh, very accustomed to it in the last few years. Um, I think it does uh, deserve much more support than it gets. There are cancer research charity shops everywhere. There's Sue Ryder, there's British Heart, all of which are important and all of which I suspect are probably can contribute more to mortality rates than, than gut illnesses, but probably not by that much. Now, in Kubler-Ross terms, coming to terms with things, I've gone from denial, um, uh, and depression to uh, now getting a little angry. I've messed up my life completely due, due ultimately to the misbehavior of a two millimeter long flap of skin buried deep inside of my body. Uh, it means that I haven't played with my son who is now four half as much as I wanted to. It meant I quit one of the biggest jobs in financial journalism. I'm not very happy about this now and I'm beginning to get a little more angry. Uh, Rather than getting angry, I think it would be much more useful actually to, to start giving far more money and supporting charities like this one.